My name is Sangwon An from Security R&D Team at Line Corporation. Today, I'm going to talk about JavaScript white box crypto and security enhancement project we are working on Line Chrome extension. It is about a way to protect the sensitive data in the browsers. It covers web cryptography API and white box cryptography and web assembly. So I believe it would be helpful for web application developer who want to protect the sensitive data and cryptographic keys in the browsers, or to integrate white box cryptography into your service. The rest of the talk will be like this. It will first explain the backgrounds why on why we needed such security module for line services. Then I will discuss real-world problems we faced in web application, including Chrome extension. And I will introduce our white box security module for the problems and explain which technology stack and threat model we considered, why we decided to use white box cryptography and web assembly, how we implemented the module, which implementation issues we encountered, and its use cases. I will then conclude by sharing the lesson we learned. Now let's move on and explore how we integrate security into development pipeline effectively. We have been working on shifting the security to the left in development pipeline. To shift the left focus to be able to identify and mitigate security threat at the earliest stages in the development pipeline. Traditionally, security checks were implemented during the final stage of this development because software implementation, uh, software development lifecycle is mostly focused on the development. There is less focus on security than on the other stages. By the time security engineers perform security checks in the final stage, the product would have passed through the most of the other stages and been almost fully developed. So discovering a security thread at such a late stage means redesigning and rewriting a lot of code, which wastes a lot of time. Therefore, we are trying to incorporate security into all stages of the software development lifecycle. This is called the secure software development lifecycle. The obvious advantage is that we can identify issues sooner and work on resolving them immediately. So it is a great practice, but it does, it does come with its complications. A common challenge is is that it can temporarily disrupt existing development workflow. Developers do understand security basics, but they are not familiar with things such as threat models, security design pattern, and standard. Developers priorities the stability and release schedule, not security, which means they often choose simplicity over security. Sometimes secure design and its implementation could be extremely difficult. It may be a daunting task for a developer in some situation. In order to efficiently integrate security into the development pipeline without disrupting the existing development process, it is better not only to provide security guidelines, but to develop and provide the security feature themselves instead of letting developers making their own implementation. That's why we developed these features inside our security module, ATSM. ATSM stands for Line Trusted Security Module. It is a client-side security module, and it supports iOS, Android, and at the beginning, and WebAssembly module added for now. ATSM is being used in Line Messenger, Line Pay, Line Banks for vital authenticator and data encryption. We had a couple of presentations related to ATSM at previous Line Dev Day 2019 and 2020. These presentations were about vital authenticator as one of the features of ATSM and the development approach we used to simplify cross-platform support in mobile. In today's 
presentation, I will focus on ATSM WebAssembly module based on white box cryptography and WebAssembly, explaining its use cases in the Chrome extension of the Lime Messenger. One of the main motivations we decided to develop ATSM WebAssembly module is all web applications, including Chrome extensions, face the common security problems. In those browsers, there are not many options for secure storage of sensitive data, such as cryptographic keys. This naturally leads to hard-coded cryptographic key issue in many web applications. The second one is that about mitigation against unanticipated token leakage and API abuse. Attackers reverse engineer mobile or web application to figure out how it works, then program both to abuse your business API for spamming, phishing, DDoS, and even with fake uh, clients to take over accounts. To prevent illegitimate access from using stolen token or malicious board, this can be mitigated by binding a token to a public key at the key issuance and requiring the client proof possession of its private key when using the token. The third one uh, is about cryptographic key protection mechanism against the cross-site script vulnerability on the web. Uh, including DOM based attacks on the client and temporary compromises of JavaScript delivered by the server. Lastly, Line Messenger provides end to end encryption protocol. I will explain the detail further later on, but one of the most important parts of the end to end encryption protocol is that the private key should be stored safely. Mobile platforms provide hardware-based key managers, such as Secure Enclave in iOS, and hardware-backed key stores, Strongbox in Android, but the browser doesn't have it. All the issues ultimately boil down to the client-side key management issue. In the meantime, web technologies have appeared over the last few years that enabled new solution for securing cryptographic operations in the browser. They include the Web Cryptography API and IndexedDB. But a question comes to mind, would modern web technologies be able to protect the key and contents even if the attacker has total control over the cryptographic operations and script execution? Let's talk briefly about the threat of the Cross-site script vulnerabilities. It is one of the most common type of vulnerability in web applications. It allows an attacker to execute malicious code in the application context. An attacker exploiting a cross-site script vulnerability can gain the ability to do whatever the user can do, including copying his password, accessing credential information, and much more. Let's assume that there is an arbitrary code execution vulnerability, such as cross-site script in Chrome line extension. As you can see in the image, it could be able to gain access to the end-to-end -end encryption key pair by a script execution. The code in line Chrome extension has been obfuscated, but an attacker could still gain access to the key. In our DRAM model, we mainly focused on white box threat model. There are three types of threat model in terms of security threat modeling, such as white box, gray box, and black box threat model, which depends on how much information an attacker has access to. We assume that an attacker has full control of the execution environment and complete access to the implementation of the cryptographic algorithm in the browser, even having higher permission than the browser has. The attacker can observe the encryption process within uh, the system, and they can modify anything at will. The goal of the attacker is to take the key in our threat model. The attacker could attempt to gain access to the secret key in memory or storage with script execution. 
and malware has access to the device storage, may be able to take the key without script execution. One of the objectives is to ensure that even though the attacker has access to the object of the secret key in JavaScript, they cannot access to the contents of the key at last. Next, we want to build an additional protection layer that can protect the stored key even though the device is compromised. We consider to combine Web Crypto API and IndexedDB to build general purpose key storage solution at the beginning. Web Crypto API provides common cryptographic operations built in the browsers without external library dependency. Using Web Cryptography API brings the following benefits in terms of security. Once generated a key, only exposes metadata information to the JavaScript environment, like the type, algorithm, key usages, and etc., but not the content of the key. It is also a requirement from the RFC that the content of the key is not accessible to the JavaScript environment. If the key is not intended to, to be exported to the outside, market its uh, property as non extractable via, via the parameter of key generation function. And it can be set the key usages so, so that the key can only be used for a specific purpose, such as encrypt, decrypt, sign, verify, and etc. Also, the key object directly can be stored in the index DB storage. Yeah, and I will explain about the limitations that makes the web of crypto API difficult to use in the service. First, the web crypto API specification does not explicitly provide any storage mechanism. The image on the right side is the index DB database I dumped as you can see, the content of the key object keeps in plain text. It is not a vulnerability, it's a specification. Anyone who wants to store the, their key in persisted storage should be aware that this specification places no normative requirements on implementation as to how the underlying cryptographic key material is, is stored. In particular, it does not guarantee the, the underlying cryptographic key material will not be persisted to the file system, possibly unencrypted, nor that it will be inaccessible to users or other applications learning with the same privilege as the user agent. It always depends on uh, the browser, their own implementation. Second, uh, if you want to provision a key from the server, it is required another key for unlapping in the client. This unlapping key uh, can be derived from the user password using PBKDF algorithm, but it may create friction for the user experience. Developers may end up using hard-coded key again for the user experience and simplicity. Web Crypto API does not provide what is called a key attestation, which is a mechanism to ensure that the key has been generated by the legitimate client application or a trusted source. This also protects against the MITM attacks during key registration. And lastly, there was one implementation issue for us. Web Crypto API doesn't support CURB 2.5.19 which is used in our end-to-end -end encryption protocol. They only support least approved EC curves. Therefore, uh, due to these problems, we decided to implement our own JavaScript crypto module based on um, white box cryptography and web assembly. White box cryptography aims to protect cryptographic primitives and keys in software implementations even when the adversary has full control of the execution environment and complete access to the implementation of the cryptographic algorithm. In addition, as opposed to code obfuscation that protects against, against the static analysis, such as reverse engineering, 
White Box cryptography protects cryptographic keys and operations even in runtime environment. Cryptographic keys are embedded in the algorithm, making it inherently difficult to extract them. Moreover, the keys are never living in plain text form in memory, even during the execution of the cryptographic operation. With such technologies, it becomes extremely difficult for attacker to locate, modify, and extract the cryptographic keys. White box cryptography offered increased resistance to reverse engineering and dynamic code instrumentation toolkit like Frida, Pintor, and Bargreen. White box cryptography is purely software based, so we can use it to develop any custom cryptographic APIs across platforms. In particular, Line Chrome Messenger currently relies on only existing thread to web application, making it more, a more attractive and easier target for attacker to exploit. Therefore, white box cryptography can be a reliable solution that provides a general defense in depth against threat. There are much more than existing threat to web applications. That's why we decided to use white box cryptography for improving the security of the line Chrome Messenger. White box cryptography enables an additional key protection layer against direct access to the key in terms of the white box security. Secure key provisioning is a very practical use case for white box instead of using hard-coded static key, which can be discovered by reverse engineering the application. This key can be protected with a white box. In addition to static key provisioning, white box can also be used to protect dynamic key provisioned from the server side. And it allows to bind the key to the device so that they cannot use in, in another device, even if an attacker takes the key itself. WebAssembly can be a good combination with white box cryptography. What WebAssembly enables you to do is to take things like C, C++, or Lust code and compile it into what is called a WebAssembly module. You can load them into the web application and call the native implementation from the JavaScript. We are particularly interested in this technology because it provides sandboxing and um, at an application level and other nice security features such as memory safety, undefined behavior sanitizer, address sanitizer, control flow integrity, and lastly, faster performance. WebAssembly was initially designed to enable near-native code execution speed in the browsers. It is very faster compared to JavaScript because, like JavaScript, when the code learns the code, there is no need to compile it since it is always compiled at build time. The more complicated computation, the faster Watson's performance gets. For that reason, WebAssembly is suitable for white box cryptography implementation, which performs very complicated computation. We wrote the module in C++ and compiled the code to WebAssembly module using EMScript. EMScript provides various options for connecting JavaScript and compiled code. EMBind is part of the EMScript tool chain. It is used to bind the C++ function and classes to the JavaScript so that the compiled code can be used in a natural way by JavaScript. In the Chrome extension, in the line Chrome extension, it is a WebAssembly model loaded in the sandbox page in Chrome extension. The sandbox page will not have access to extension API, and it can only communicate with the them via the post message function. ATSM assembly module provides common crypto API and end-to-end -end inc encryption feature for now. A secure key is one of the basic concepts in our key protection scheme. 
The private key and secure key is encrypted at all time in white box container. And even when it performs any operations with the private key, it does so without ever exposing the contents in plain text form. If an attacker takes the key object itself, they don't get any key information from that. Usually, white box SDK provides cryptographic primitives like OpenSSL, so it is not a big deal to implement security features. Therefore, I would focus on development issues we encountered than its detailed implementation, because I think explaining how we solve this problem is more valuable to you than explaining its, its implementation detail. Our secure storage lies on the browser's local storage, storage system. And secure storage key, which is used to encrypt the data, is per user unique key. And it's provisioned from the server. And the key is loaded in memory when each time secure storage is initialized. The key object is only valid in memory. It, can, it also can be not be exported to the outside since this, this key's property was set to be non-extractable. Data is encrypted with this key and stored in the local storage. In this case of the secure storage, it was not an existing security feature, so there were no challenges to implementing and integrating security features into the servers. Let's move on to the next use case. It is about integrating white box implementation into existing security features. And it covered why it was hard to do and which implementation issues we encountered. I will start by introducing letter sealing as our end-to-end -end encryption protocol. Message types that support letter sealing, such as text, location message, and audio video calls are encrypted on the line client before being sent to the server. The server cannot decrypt the encrypted message. Letter sealing uses the elliptic curve DP monkey exchange method over the curve 2 by 19 Each user has their own key pair on the device and only exchanges the public key with other users. When two public keys are exchanged, each user ha can compute the sh sh same shared secret with their own private key and other user public keys. It's then used to derive an in encryption key. The message is encrypted with the encryption key derived from the shared secret. The key pair should be stored safely in the application private storage. But as I explained at the beginning, browsers don't have many options for persistent storage where cryptographic key can be securely stored. And also, an attacker could still gain, ex gain access to the key without script execution. That's why we decided to integrate integrate a white box based implementation into existing letter sealing implementation so that attackers won't be able to gain access to the keys even they even if they have total control over cryptographic operations and script execution. We have released its technical white paper which offered in-depth details to letter sealing. If you are interested in our end-to-end -end encryption scheme, please take a look at the white paper. As I mentioned in the white box cryptography part, the key are never revealed in plain text in memory, even during the execution of the cryptographic algorithm. It means the attacker doesn't get any key information from the key object. As opposed to the benefits of using white box cryptography in terms of security, developers also cannot access to or manipulate arbitrary byte of the key. It makes it much harder to implement security features than non-white box implementation. We have faced two major implementation issues that we have encountered while implementing security features for white box based letter sealing. One of the issues was the mismatched padding issue in the key wrapping algorithm. 
when designing multiple uh, multi-platform application, there is often happen the mismatched or incompatible issues in the available padding algorithm provided by between libraries and platforms. It is not a big deal in non-white box implementation because the developer puts some code in and make it worse. But in white box implementation, the developer cannot control the raw data of the key since secure key doesn't allow to manipulate arbitrary byte of the key. And in elliptic curve key generation, uh, key pair generation part, actually in curve to byte by 19, a similar issue happened as well. In curve to byte by 19 private key generation, you need a kind of byte manipulation called clamping before the private key is used. We use the white box key utility, which is used to create a protected key blob from plain text input data, and special purpose algorithm in the key derivation function for the problem. I will take a closer look at how to use this method to control arbitrary byte focusing on clamping in the key generation, because there, there is a lot of overlap in solving the padding issue. Key export tool is one of the white box key utility, which is to create a protected exported key blob from plain input data. This operation should, should be carried out in trusted environment, not the client side. It can be a server with a strong access control. Secure key class has import key function, which is to load a key blob that was previously exported using export key function or prepared using the key export tool. In the next section, let's take a look at clamping. To generate the curve to 519 private key, first we need to generate 32 byte random secret from a script graphically safe source, such as secure random. Then do clamping to secret key before the key is used. It, is, it was confusing for me at first. The confusion comes to from thinking that what I supply to curve to 519 as the private key is already a Scala value. It is, it is not actually. It is a uniformly random key. Curve to 519 then applies the subjective mapping function called the clamping to the key to derive a suitable scalar value. The clamping function looks like this. In non-white box implementation, you can do the clamping with only three lines at last. But how could we control the first and the last byte in the white box protected key? First of all, we use it pre-computed lookup table for all possible value in the first and the last byte of the private key. The lookup table generation code look like this. Using this way, we can generate lookup tables and create this lookup table to white box protected key blob using key export tool, which is then ready for importing into secure key. I will explain how to control the first and the last byte of the 32 byte random secret one by one. Fix random offset in the lookup tables, text 16 byte using slicing algorithm. And concatenate two keys and randomly pick the 16 byte of block of the lookup table and 16 byte random secret. And then takes the 16 byte of the data at the 15th index of the key we can get the first byte manipulated 16 byte of the key. The last byte manipulation is similar to the first byte manipulation. Fix random offset uh, in the lookup tables for the last byte of the key, then text 16 byte using slicing algorithm. And concatenate two keys, 16 byte random secret and randomly picked 16 byte block of the lookup table. And then takes 16 byte of the key data 
and at the second index of the key, we can get the last byte manipulated 16 byte of the key. Then concatenate the key, the front part and the rear part of the key. Finally, we can get the first byte and the last byte manipulated, so the two byte curve to five byte key, done clamping. I would like to conclude uh, with a few lessons we, we've learned during this project. First, we have shown that people that it is able to control arbitrary byte indirectly using, using lookup tables and special purpose key derivation function, such as concatenating two keys and slicing keys. But the problem here that is that uh, the implementation gets much more complicated. So we need to simplify it to lead and maintain easier. Second, developing some security feature inside the security department and providing them to the client team can be more efficient in building a good security design. If security team only provides security guides and good practice, it may create friction between development and security, and, and it may not move on the next step. During integrating ATSM assembly model with the developers, I realized the need for debug feature that could check whether the correct key was left or derived. So I added debug features to print the hash value of the key and to be able to inject a fixed key for the testing. And it helped a lot for developers to integrate ATSM web assembly module into this service. So let's see the conclusion. Achieving security within the white box RAM model is very difficult in environment without hardware-based security support. As the cryptographic keys used for protection are stored in the system, and potentially available to the attacker who has full control over the code, memory, and storage of the ex execution device. Protecting such keys without hardware security becomes the fundamental security challenge. And this is what white box cryptography tries to achieve. With WebAssembly, uh, white box implementation can be integrated into more security features in web, web applications. Lastly, that's what I was always saying to people in the meetings. White box cryptography is never an original solution, and it is not a magic bullet that makes an insecure security design secure. So far, we talked about how we could use white box cryptography and WebAssembly to improve the security of the crypto system in JavaScript. Thank you, very, very, thank you very much for listening to our talk. If you have any questions, there will be an open QA session. Ask me anything. Thank you. An-san, Thank you, Mr. An. So let's have a, a plus talk. So the person uh, who is asking the question will go deeper uh, into the content of the presentation. And we'll entertain the questions as much as possible from the audience. If you have any questions, please use the question mark function on the right and hand side of the screen and upload your question. So the questioner is from Yahoo, Mr. Hirotaka Kataoka. Mr. Kataoka, would you introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. I am from the security and development of the Yahoo Japan. My name is Hirotaka Kataoka. Thank you very much. So for Chrome extension, I use that from line. So I'm very interested in the content of the presentation. So I'd like to ask several questions. If I may, thank you very much. OK, thank you. So let's start the questions from Mr. Kataoka. Yes, 
Well, first of all, white box engine you talked about, and at line, is this something that you implement? It basically, yeah, we have planned to develop yeah, our own white box engine. Yeah, but yeah, it is very difficult to implement the white box, secure white box implementation because yeah, there were a lot of attacks, kind of yeah, side channel attacks. We uh, had uh, a few offensive research uh, to attack uh, white box cryptography. Yeah, the side, side channel is possible to extract the key from the uh, learn time. So we use uh, the commercial white box solution to protect the sensitive data in yeah, crucial services. And also, yeah, we are, yeah, our plan, still we have the plan to develop our own white box implementation for the other uh, many web applications because the using white box, uh, commercial white box, there is um, the license issue, so we can use all the web application of the line services and the line group. So yeah, yeah, we want to build yeah white box implementation, but yeah, we are using yeah commercial white box for now. Thank you. So that means C++ library is something that you use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, we use it yeah, in C++, yeah. That's all. I see, thank you very much. So you talked about secure key. So secure key in the white box. Is this something that you generate in the white box? Secure key, yeah, it's generated in white box, yeah, container, yeah. <laughs> I see, thank you. I see, I understand. It's interesting. Another separate topic that I was interested in is that um, there was a slide somewhere. When you talked about the storage or secure storage, yes, on the page of the secure storage from the server, you would uh, do the provisioning and using that key to place it in the local storage. I think you mentioned that. So concerning that, so what is stored in this case in the local storage? Uh, it could be yeah, some sensitive data. Uh, such as the token and encryption key, and yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah some token and and then encryption also. <laughs> so you're saying that the uh, whatever so. Uh, sensitive information that you use in line? Eto. I see. This key is sent uh, from the server. So it's different from the key for the white box. Is that correct? It's separate. The pro uh, provisioning the key from the server, uh, the key is generated from the server side using the uh, some user ID and some data, and yeah, encrypt the uh, pre-shared the key for a lapping, yeah, and also in the client side, yeah, has ATSM 
has the uh, hard coded static uh, static uh, a wrapping key and to wrap the provision the the key in provisioning process. <laughs> I see. Thank you. I think uh, the time is uh, running out, but can I ask one more question? Sure. So one uh, thing, uh, in white box, I think the operation is limited. I think uh, you said that uh, makes it difficult. So if uh, you want to change uh, the place, the white box uh, encrypted uh, uh, operation will not allow you to do that. Is that correct? Is my understanding correct? Thank you very much. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you.